Hello, so in this uh, video I'm going to go over updating some of your textures for hair shader and use, use in Unreal Engine. Okay, so I've changed the opacity map to black and white and I'm going to save over that. So you shouldn't have an alpha channel, just black and white. Uh, white will be what you see and black will be what you won't see. Now we're going to normal map online and generating a normal map from the the opacity map. It's actually a mask because it's black and white. And just changing some of these sliders here. This video has been sped up one and a half times just to make it quicker. Okay, so once you're happy with that, you can download uh, your normal map. You can change the map type here. So it's going to download this ambient occlusion map as well. You might not need it, but it's worthwhile grabbing some maps and see if you can use them. Potentially mix them in later. So here I'm showing the NALD workflow. So same place, I'm just going to grab the opacity map or mask. And I can mess around with these sliders to get something a bit more what I want. And I'm just going to rename some things. Okay, that update integrator button that helps to generate these uh, these other textures that I could potentially use. Just gonna grab what I need here: curvature, ambient occlusion, uh, height, and normal map. So I don't have to use them, I just want them in case I don't get a desired look and I can maybe mix these textures together. So it's an online generated normal map. It's just a fixed opacity mask. Okay, so here I'm taking the, the height map to generate uh, variation tones. So the way that works is the red channel will take the black and white values. Black will be turned into one color and white will be turned into a different color inside the shader inside Unreal. And so you can see that I've just enhanced the red channels variation. So I'm making a new channel here but I'm just working in the standard layer system to get a grayscale image and I've created the gradient where the root is. It should be at the top. If you're using uh, some other means to make hair textures then that may change. You might have to hand paint these root areas. But I've just added some noise and things and using some vertical motion blur to sort of pull that down a bit. I'm just mixing in a, an extra bit of gradient just to make the top even lighter. That way those white areas they're going to inherit uh, they're going to get another colour 
basically. So the root here, the red channel, is going to get a variation of two tones. Yeah, sorry, the, the red channel will get the variation tones. So that might be like your base colors. Then the green channel will hold the root area. And wherever that's white, it's going to show the new root color. And wherever it's black, it's going to see through to the root, uh, to the base colors. Sorry if it's confusing. <coughs> and the tip here, where it's white, it's going to show a tip color. So you basically got control of four colors. You get your your base variation, your root, and your tip. So if you think of the red channel, wherever it's black, it's actually a base color that's coming through. And wherever it's white, it's being replaced by a secondary color. And the green channel is covering the root area. Wherever it's white, it's going to show the root. So that's why you get this three-tone looking image. And here I'm just adding some extra noise into the the variation mask. So you will see I, I kind of use the layering system in Photoshop to make these. And then when I'm happy, I'll, I'll you know turn that into one image and paste it into the correct channel. You can get away with using a black and white texture as well, but for the shader, I recommend using this system because you get more control of color and the final look. I'm just replacing the file here. So once you've got these then should open your project I'm just going to open this one um, because this is the one I use for you know just checking things it's a copy of the original here shader from Unreal. So you can see the, the two tones used in the opacity map here. That's that's what you want for your opacity mask. It doesn't actually use the alpha channel in any way, it just drives it through a cutout. So if something something is black then it's just gonna be completely cut out. Uh, something's white it's going to show it and it uses the temporal dither inside the shader to get yeah, a softer look and it's the best method to use if you want to sort different hair cards out uh, soft transparency is hopeless because it's too much for the GPU to sort hopefully one day they'll bring out chips that sort that right so there's a frizz normal map opacity and your variation as you can see here in these ones and these are 4k textures that have been generated using hair strand designer which is a standalone tool which i've created and you can find that on artstation it's making a new map up here okay completely blank map so you can see everything just import what i need so this is the customers here put it in the scene reset they're movable because we don't want to have to bake any lighting or anything so a little side like that Let's 
to make this ground a bit bigger. Oh, where is it? Okay, it looks like the axis of the head's a bit further down than I expected. Okay, so I've got directional light in there. I'm just going to go ahead and start applying some of the existing materials to see how it looks. Obviously, these hair materials aren't designed for this hair mesh. That's why you need to make up your own hair cards and stuff. So, yeah, I'm just doing that for fun just to show you. Okay, so I'm going to import the textures that are relative to this hair mesh. We'll just apply this temporary hair shader and we'll start to assign the textures. So the normal map here, opacity and the variation control. Already we're getting something that looks pretty good. I'm just moving the lights around and stuff. Move my point light too far up, so can't really see that. <coughs> okay, start to change these tones. So you got your two first tones there. They control the variation. This one's the root tone. So I tend to make that kind of dark, but I'll put everything. Oops, I just reset everything. No, don't want that. So I'll put everything to a light tone first so you can see what you get. So this is supposedly white hair, but it really depends on a lot of the settings how it's going to look. Just I'm um, curious to why there's an odd artifacting in the hair here, and it might just be yeah something I've done with the textures. It could could easily be that. But yeah, I'm just working with what I've got. So you can see I can add extra root coverage, and that just pushes that root channel a bit further. Adding the, the frizz. The, the frizz depends on the texture being perpendicular, like horizontal or vertical. You can't have too many curves and things. I really expect the curves to come from the mesh uh, design as opposed to the textures themselves because you're going to be locked in if you start doing curved uh, hair textures. It really depends. All right. Okay, so I'm just messing around with the settings to get something decent. You can see the different controls do different things, so it's good to try each of them just a little bit. And then as I start to change these tones, you can see that it's looking more furry. Course, depending on the kind of hair that you're trying to make, if this is for a, uh, a creature, then you could, you know, increase the the frizz components. You can even change the frizz map itself. So, even though the the frizz map is dependent on. Well, not really actually. The frizz map, you can do what you want with it, but in this case it gets tiled a few times. There's still a little artifacting going on here and I'm not too sure why. So I'm just going to check that out with a flat material to see if it's the mesh, which I doubt. It could be some Compression or something. It's just uh, just something that I've done with the the variation map itself. I think uh, it's it's looking more like hair now. I'm just gonna fuss around with some more uh, 
settings just to make sure but yeah if you're quite happy with that workflow then you can use that uh, so that's CP tree online um, normal map online to make your normal maps or you can use NALD but that's a paid tool uh, you can use X normal probably crazy bump anything else that can generate a normal map from a grayscale map substance and uh, the VRT variation root tip image here is the one that's going to drive your colors so red deals with the secondary base tone green deals with the root area and blue deals with the tip area uh, they get driven through the shader as masks you don't actually see red, green and blue that's just what you're seeing in that image you're actually separated up into masks and these masks are black and white or grayscale and they will drive your new colour through and yep, it uses Unreal's base anisotropic shader and basically capitalise on top of that with different controls and it uses the variation root tip texture um, and this was designed to go with the hair strand designer tool that I've created so that if you were using Unreal then you could bring these maps in. Uh, I want to extend on this pack in the future as well so I want to make some extra uh, mm, slots for ambient occlusion and more. So now I'm just changing the colours to something a bit more radical. And from here I think I'll just uh, speed the video on up and out. So thanks for watching and catch you later. Bye.